Very recently, I, along with my friends from Luxembourg, went for the Mount Everest Base Camp trip. During our trip, we were discussing about many subjects and raising different thought-provoking questions. In the meanwhile, one of our friends simply asked, how do they measure the height of Mount Everest for the first time? Or how do you get the number 8848 meter? Well, the straightforward answer could have been they simply used the GPS technology. But remember, GPS technology evolved only by the end of millennium, whereas we knew the height of Mount Everest even before that. So, in this episode, let's try to figure it out together. How was the height of Mount Everest measured for the first time? Or, making the question very simple, how even we can measure the height of any mountain? At the heart of measuring the height of any mountain relies on the basic concept of trigonometry. The way it works is in any right angle triangle, by knowing the value of an angle and the distance of the specific side, you can work out the height of a triangle with this wonderful looking equation. Therefore, the work starts firstly by assuming a big triangle in your working field. For this, you set three points. One at the tip of the mountain, second at the base of the mountain, and final point is your position at the ground. Here, you measure the angle of the tip of the mountain and then the distance between you and the mountain. But wait, what if you cannot measure this big distance? In that case, walk towards the mountain and measure the second angle from this new position. In this way, you have two angles measured from two positions in the ground. On top of that, you also know the distance between your initial and final position in the ground. Now you can put those values back into your trigonometric mantra and play with the equations a bit here and there, which will give you back the height of the mountain. But wait! This is just the height of the mountain from your position. For a complete picture, you have to add the extra height, which is the location of your place from sea level. The final value you obtain is the height of the mountain with respect to sea level. Finding the height of mountain, it might seem easy. Well, in practice, it is not. Because every information you collect at the ground is associated with the error. And the game is about knowing and applying the correction factors which will reduce your error. Let's try to see some of these errors. Refraction of light. Light passing from one medium to another medium is refracted, or in another word, it bends. This means the light traveling from the tip of the mountain to your eyes is bent by atmosphere, as a result of which you see the tip of the mountain slightly at wrong position. Or in observational term, the measured angle of inclination is blurred. Kind of a similar effect which makes star to twinkle even though the star are just a glowing mass of objects. Such error introduced by refraction has to be minimized while measuring the angle, which can be done with an appropriate knowledge of temperature and pressure of the atmospheric layers. There are of course rigorous theoretical formula and several kinds of assumption in order to minimize the error. One of the way to minimize the error has been to do the act of measurements during the midday when variation of temperature gradient are least. Curvature of Earth Yes, Earth is not flat. It is approximately spherical in shape, so an error is introduced in any significantly large major horizontal distance. A correction factor considering the curvature and radius of the Earth has to be added for accurate distance measurements. The word sea level might remind you a well-known property of water, that is, it maintains its level when kept in any irregular shape vessel. Meaning the sea water kept or confined in irregular shape of the earth should also maintain same level everywhere. However, you are missing the important point here, that is, water in the planet earth is held by its gravity. What if I say the gravity is not same everywhere around the earth due to its irregular interior density? That means the water accumulates and increases the level in a stronger gravity area than in the weaker one. In addition to that, the mountain itself is a huge chunk of mass causing higher gravitational pull to the water around it. Also let's not forget the rotation of earth causes the water to accumulate more in the equatorial region than in the poles. With the help of mathematics and logical reasoning, this conundrum has been solved to the greater extent nowadays. Let's get back to our history. During the period in between 1840 to 50, British surveyor Andrew Waugh and his team measured the height of the tallest mountain, Mount Everest, local name Sagarmatha. Since closer approach to Nepal was denied in that period, they placed six stations very far from the mountain, length ranging from 174 to 192 km, at the plains of Bengal in India. 
an observational tower was established at each location where his team members performed rigorous measurements for years. Those locations were at the height of 70 meter from the sea level. There are criticisms and several arguments on the value of refractive index used by him in order to minimize the error introduced by refraction. But I would simply like to admire his drive in getting those observations and computing the data. The mean height computed from all these observations was 8839.80 meter and that was the height of Mount Everest known for the first time. In coming years, several other observations were performed from hills of Darjeeling and even from closer distance like Namche Bazar. Ever since, there has been many debates and extra measurements conducted in order to minimize the error and give the precise value of the height. Nevertheless, we are still using the value which is very close to the first observation with an extra modification by adding 8.2 meter, thus making a total of 8848 meter. Have you ever considered that this number 8848 will not be the fixed height of Mount Everest forever? Yes, the Himalayan mountains are not stable. They are rising up and up every year. More on that some other time in another video. Thank you for watching.